to all the speaker for the today's live hari murli dar pendiala is currently working as a director for shraddha information services private limited and as coo for 7 in q a private incubator with iot and information security as a thrust areas for many companies he pursued masters in computer science and engineering florida atlantic university and bachelor's in triple e from sv university tirupati india he has 23 plus years of experience in information technology with specialization in the field of information security he is a cissp cism and itilv3 certified professional he has served as board member for silicon valley issa holding various roles from 2004 till 2000 he worked as senior information security consultant in fish network security and agilent mnc's companies okay this is about the few information about the speaker now i will hand over the session to the speaker hari sir please uh, welcome you sir once again so thank you for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, giving your valuable time for us thank you thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you shobha thank you sir thanks for the opportunity and uh, let me share my slides uh, today is my topic would be basically on um, technology and beyond where we are going the way we see it as the industry as an incubator and where we are going to uh, in in future maybe in 10 years 15 years or 20 years so uh, let me start with my uh, slides uh, basically The topics are very, very uh, general. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, please do uh, let me know. Uh, my screen loading. Okay, Shabha, can you see it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So. So basically, I'm going to talk about uh, it's a technology Abiel. Uh, Abiel, it's a hodgepodge of technology. My experiences, uh, nothing specific about any particular technology. Uh, when uh, uh, Professor Shoba asked me about, okay, we need to give it a talk. A, a thought went through my mind. Hey, hey, can I talk something about technology? Then uh, she mentioned it's going to be faculty development program, and I have seen the. uh the esteemed speakers uh, who have spoken and they have covered a lot of the technology that uh, that are very hot today so then i thought okay let me talk about something what's happening in general uh what's happening to the to us or to our ecosystem because of uh, latest trends in technology okay so that's why it's going to be an avial uh and the uh ingredients are uh, basically the technology and beyond and my experiences with the technology and uh, uh as a startup incubator and a mentor for the past uh, uh 10 12 years and also uh, a as a cybersecurity professional okay uh so these are my experiences in uh, uh 20 25 years some of my experiences okay so let me get into technology first okay and this my encounters so when i started my engineering in 1988 here in tirupati and uh, we had we didn't have any computers uh, we didn't have any pcs even though pcs were uh, a little bit widely available in us and other uh, western countries uh, in india we we, we rarely
to fix those uh, computers? It's it's gaming. Okay, we had some we had uh, some DAS games. We got hold of some DAS games, and we thought, okay, why don't we try those games on these 80s and or 80s and 60s? That's how it started. So a bunch of us got together, like four or five people. We got together, and one of uh, one of our classmates, they, he is very good at uh, uh, you know soldering and fixing computer. Uh, I mean PCBs. So he fixed some of them and we scavenged parts from the others. We were able to get two computers, make them up and running. So we used to spend nights uh, loading uh, operating system uh, uh, and trying to load the games and try to run them. Suddenly, you know, they used to break. So again, uh, the cycle starts, fixing them and then playing and all this. This is how we learn. Uh, about computers, and that was my experience with the computers. Yeah, yeah, we do. We did have a Unix computer lab, uh, a Unix computer. I think Univac or one of those uh, big computers uh, at at the university level. But the time, what with the time slot, what we used to get is barely half an hour. We didn't have much time to even type in the program and then uh, see the output. So. So half an hour is not enough. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's that's how the, the whole uh, uh, our experience at the university level has started. So when I I mean the, the next thing as a progression, I said okay, let me go to US, uh, and then I applied as an electrical engineer, and then I went to US, and then what happened is, and I found. Computers is a hard thing that's happening. So then I thought, okay, why don't I shift from electrical engineering uh, to uh, uh, computer engineering? So as part of computer engineering, we had VLSI, uh, electronics, and uh, uh, and uh, computers also. So there in the labs at the college level, I've seen uh, Unix systems sitting on each desk. So I got like, what? We, we didn't have any computers in just two years. We have a, a powerful Unix system sitting at the desktop level. Those are Sun, Sun Microsystems computers. So we learned, uh, I, even though we, we knew uh, basic commands, Unix system commands, um, we started learning uh, computers. I mean, we did make mistakes, like I remember uh, one of our uh, uh, colleagues, uh, he has been running his VLSI simulation for eight hours to 10 hours. And then uh, I tried to log into that computer and then I got locked out and I was able to get in and then I need to finish my lab. Then, then uh, the stupid mistake I did is unplugging that computer and plugging it in back, okay? Then later I realized my, uh, my friend has been running a simulation for eight to 12 hours. So he had to rerun that again. So we tend to make stupid mistakes while learning. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, mistakes happen, uh, but we, we need to learn from that, okay? Uh, we need to learn from that and then go from the air. I mean, once, once uh, you make a mistake, uh, you learn from it and you don't tend to make uh, uh, the same mistake again, okay? Or else, uh, you know, I, I could have asked somebody around and then say, hey, you know, why am I able to log into this computer? But, you know, I was young and I thought I knew everything, right? Like, like any other student, right? So, so uh, technology, it's basically your, your exposure. In today's world, when I talk about the 80s and 60s, I don't think majority of the uh, students know about it. And maybe some faculty, uh, uh, some of your faculty may know about it, but a majority of them don't. So it's, it's like at least 30 year old, right? So, so and, and the other, expo, other uh, thing uh, I found is when I went to US in, I think in 92 through 96, there was a lot of uh, uh, technology developments happening and Apple have released their um, uh, handheld. Uh, basically a small, uh, uh, you know, uh, a handheld where you can do C programming and it's called Isaac Newton, right? 
So I had my eye on buying an Isaac Newton uh, from the very beginning and because it's, it's fancy to have, I want to play with it and all that. So everything started like that. And then uh, US, a company called the US Robotics, right? And this, is, this, this, this was one of their first versions, uh, a Palm Pilot. They have released a Palm Pilot, it's handheld and it has some functions where it had a, you have a calendar, you have, you can store your contacts, you can store your uh, tasks, right? And you can sync with your computer. You know, you, you, ha you have data on your hand. So I was like, okay, let, let, I need to get a uh, uh, hand on this. It was, I think it's uh, Palm Pilot uh, 1000 or Palm Pilot 5000, I don't remember, uh, one of the models. So Palm Pilot, I bought Palm Pilot and it was uh, black and white, it's gray, right? The screen, the screen, it's not even color. So I bought it and then just in three months, three months, Palm Pilot has released their latest version, which is color, I think Palm Pilot 3C. So I, I was like, I spent at those days, I spent like hundred dollars to buy this. And then they released another unit for $125, which is color and, and, and better memory. I think Palm Pilot 1000 has like uh, one MB memory or three MB memory, something like that. And this color one has like, I think a five MB or 10 MB memory. So there and then I realized, okay, technology becomes absolute very fast. This was in 97, 98, okay? And then we are continuing the same. And today I can buy a, a latest and greatest uh, iPhone or uh, OnePlus, whatever the phone, and then it will become obsolete just in less than six months, um, and maybe less than one year. So, so technology is going very fast and we need to keep up with it. So there is no way we need to keep up with it, but the core of the technology, the features might change. Uh, the core of the technology stays the same, right? The features, uh, the memory increase, the memory, the, 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 the screen resolution, all these things increases, but majority of the functionalities of the phone doesn't change, right? So, so one thing you need to keep in mind, technology becomes absolute super fast, okay? And then the next one, I, history repeats, right? And today you have so many apps, uh, thousands and thousands of apps, maybe lakhs of apps you see in App Store or Play Store, right? And, and we did the same thing in 1999, uh, early 1999 and 2000. And the development of apps for desktop was the thing that was driving the uh, internet, right? Yahoo Messenger, uh, games for desktops, all the things that you are seeing today, we had, we had them developed for, for desktop because desktops or laptops, those are the latest and greatest gadgets that were available at the time. So the history repeats, right? And, and you need to keep that in mind um, uh, you need to learn your history. And uh, once you learn your history, you don't repeat the same mistakes, right? I mean, today, uh, I'm not surprised uh, uh, by any of the uh, new, new latest uh, apps that come out there uh, because uh, I have seen, and we have seen the same things uh, happening at the, uh, uh, for the desktop, right? So, so now desktops have become kind of an obsolete. They are there, but we need them for, say for example, right now. I, I mean, even though majority of my data is on my mobile, but when I do conferencing and all that, we still need our laptops or desktops, right? Because the screen is bigger and you can maneuver uh, better, okay? And, and now hardware, nobody bothers about hardware. Right? Uh, yeah, in, in uh, mobile phone, people talk about, yeah, you have latest Snapdragon or MediaTek chip, whatever. It doesn't make any difference to me as an end user. I know it's a little bit faster, screen, uh, screen resolution is a little bit bigger, more memory, but 
all in all, it's not much, uh, not much of uh, a difference, right? So the difference that makes it is software. So today, software is the king. You know the reason why software is the king? Because we don't have a technology or a latest uh, thing that we need better hardware, okay? So whatever the hardware we have is more than sufficient for the technology, uh, what we have available today. So as the uh, things progress, uh, the need for technology progresses, right? So uh, that drives uh, the hardware also, right? So, so, so you need to, you need to uh, keep that in mind. So today um, you don't see not many hardware engineers, but I can bet in two or three years down the, down, down the road, uh, we need a lot of hardware engineers, right? The technology, this mobile is going to transform into something else, which we don't know, right? So uh, maybe, maybe you'll have a, a chip implanted in your brain and uh, that interacts with you and uh, you know uh, you don't need a separate device that you need to carry right so so we don't know where where we are going with the technology right so we'll talk about uh, one of those things so so um, uh, in 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 uh, in a jazz these are the some of the uh, my experiences that made me today in the sense so when, 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 when you get exposed to, even though it's a minute thing, right? And, and you realize, uh, I mean, it's like an uh, aha moment. Okay, oh yeah, this is true, right? So that kind of moments, some of these, uh, these are my moments, okay? So, and, and, and then the next thing is, so I'm going to play, uh, play a video and majority of you may know about this. Hope you can hear the audio also. This is one of my favorite movies. Okay, so, so uh, if any of you have seen it, I mean, I know you must be enjoying this uh, video clip, right? So this is a movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So I'm not going to play the whole of video. And there are a lot of things that I learned from, 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 from this uh, uh, video, right? Uh, you might say, you know, uh, I mean, well, what can you learn? Uh, what can you learn uh, from the, from the uh, videos, right? So uh, from the movies or the videos, right? So this, is, this, is, uh, th this movie has taught me the things, the differentiation between the good the bad and the ugly, right? So, so we have, I mean, from childhood, we have uh, learned Ramayana, Mahabharata, and we have been told uh, the good and the bad and the evil, right? The good and the evil, right? But there is a thin line between the ugly and the bad, right? Ugly, you should be able to tolerate, whereas the bad, the evil, you cannot, right? So let's see what are all the good things that is coming, coming with uh, the technology, okay? These are the few points which I'm going to cover. The information is on your fingertips. Today, I can pick up a mobile and I can look up for on any topic, right? Whether it's a theory of relativity or whether uh, cooking avial or uh, cooking anything, it's on my fingertips, right? During my days, there was no Google. If I want to learn something about Avial, I have to go to the library or I have to go to a bookshop, buy a, buy a book and uh, the, the, the cooking and, and, and then I need to look how to make Avial, what are all the ingredients that are needed for your Avial. The whole process, it's not instant, 
right? So if I want to cook aviyal, it may take a day or two for me to procure the book and then read the ingredients, procure the ingredients, right? Like for example, uh, uh, Minakshi Amal cookbook, right? It's, it's very popular. It's been translated into a lot of languages, right? So the cookbook, I, I mean, I had that cookbook, right? So, so information is on your fingertips, right? And whatever you want, any topic that you want, it's available on the internet, right? But is that information uh, true? There are a lot of fake, false information that is available on the internet. There is nothing that can verify the source of the information, okay? We don't know from where the information came from, right? Whereas if it is a book, I can, I can, I can always, hey, it's written by Meena Chimal, it's been published, and I know somebody verified it, and uh, somebody uh, made it, and then, and then uh, based on that, they had given feedback, whatever, right? So information is on your fingertips, but you cannot trust, you may not be able to trust that information, right? So you need to keep that in mind that whatever information you read today, may not be true. So you need to take that information with a pinch of salt. You know what I mean? So you don't, you don't, you don't trust it, but you need to verify it. Once you verify it, ask an expert or look, uh, look for more scholarly information. And, and, and then based on that, you can uh, come to a conclusion. Okay, the information, what has been provided on a particular web page or a, a particular site, it, it is true or partially true, whatever, right? So never, never, never trust the information that is available on the internet today, right? So the good, right? It also enriches your lifestyle, right? Today with the technology, not only digital technology that's coming along, I'm talking about uh, ACs, your new cars, your latest gadgets, uh, latest things in, 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 in any place, right? Whatever the things the technology has improved, it, it, it is enriching your lifestyle, right? So when we look at the bad, you know, what's on the other side? What's the negativity of, uh, what is the neg negative things uh, uh, for enriching your lifestyle? And learning becomes easier and faster with the technology, right? So in a jest, I can say with the technology, it enriches your life, your lifestyle, and also information is available on your fingertips. So these are the two major points that comes, that the good that comes with the technology, right? So, so this, is what, this is what I have seen uh, in, in, while growing up in the, uh, one of the interesting ages, right, of uh, technology. So from 96 onwards, I was in the middle of Silicon Valley until 2009, and I've seen technology growing leaps and bounds. I've seen all kinds of things, and, and uh, whether, it's, whether it's internet or, or whatever it is. The first time I, ha I looked at uh, a browser, it's in 1992, uh, there was a NSF, National Science Foundation, uh, in the US, they had a project in our university where I was studying and they were talking about uh, a browser called Mosaic, okay, which is a precursor to Netscape, kind of precursor to Mozilla, which is precursor to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, then, then it became Chrome, right? So, so Mosaic, when, when we looked at it, yeah, what are we going to do with it, right? Uh, mosaic, what are, oh, internet, yeah, what kind of data I'm going to look at? There is not much data. So as the data has been added to the internet, it has become better.
Okay. So hold on for a second. I think my internet connection is... Uh, The wonders of technology. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so I'm back. Okay, so learning becomes easier and faster uh, and uh, th these are the uh, good things about the technology and the bad things. So now more and more we have become online, right? So uh, online, what's, what's happening is you are seeing more and more fraud happening, digital fraud. People are taking advantage of uh, 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 the, the, the innocent people who have no idea about digital things. So we are, we are at a situation where till the next generation of people, educated people, our next generation Gen X comes to uh, maybe in another 10 years, uh, digital fraud is going to increase, right? So that's a bad thing about the technology. Corruption of mind, right? So your mind is getting corrupted. You know, you have access to, because of the technology, you have access to bad things, right? It's going to corrupt your mind, right? Young minds, right? This is something which we see in uh, cyber, uh, um, uh, our, our uh, uh, cyber security cases a lot of times. And easy access to destructive, of destructive technology, right? So today, if somebody wants to uh, manufacture a, a, an explosive, it's very easy. Earlier days, you had to approach appropriate people, and you have to learn about it and all that. Today, it's all available on the internet, okay? And we are becoming too dependent on internet. So, so without, I mean, I remember the days, I mean, just the other day, I, me and my friend, we were discussing, you know, we used to travel and, uh, a, you know, I, I, I remember my, uh, I had letters from, uh, uh, one of my maternal grandfathers wrote to my paternal grandfather, like uh, we have uh, started from uh, my paternal grandfather's village and they have reached their hometown and so on so date. Uh, we're all doing well. And these are, this is a postcard, right? There was a gap of about a week or 10 days. There are hardly like, uh, nowadays there are hardly like a three, four hours drive. But those days it, it took, the whole communication took more than a week. Right, so so I, it's it's like today. The moment I get onto the car, I may get a call from my home, say asking, "Hey, where are you? How are you doing? You know, where exactly are you? How long it's going to take to reach you?" So so our dependency on technology is increasing, right? So one of the things I mean, like uh, you might have seen uh, your uh, previous generation, our older generation. Uh, some of them, they don't want to carry mobiles. Uh, they don't want to carry anything. They want to be happy with whatever they have, right? Uh, because, because it's not that they don't want it, because it's the expectations. They don't want unnecessary disturbances uh, from the things what they are doing, right? So, so I know sometimes, you know, my dad carries a cell phone, but most of the time it might be off, right? He switches it on only when, it, when he needs to make a call. Otherwise he says, 
I have a landline and if people want to reach me, they know where to reach me. Or I do carry, I mean, when I go, when I travel with my father, I do carry my cell phone. If they need to reach me, they know where to, which number to call. So, so your dependency on, on, on uh, technology, it's, it's increasing day by day because if your cell phone is gone, like, like it happened to me about 10 days ago and I, my mobile got corrupted. Uh, my operating system, I had to uh, do a refresh, right? A factory reset and even syncing uh, even though I sync on a daily basis with Google contacts and everything, everything I have all the backups, but still I lost some data, right? So that data includes some of my important contacts, right? Whether it's my uh, clients and some of them, some of them are my vendors. Uh, these are the, some of the stuff which, uh, which, uh, which I lost. So I had to ask around, I had to ask my friends to get that data, right? and health issues. So this is another major issues with the technology. You know, right? Some of them, your eyesight, it's getting deteriorated, right? Back pain. We sit as computer programmers, or computer engineers, as a technologist, or a technology user. You might have seen uh, during this uh, lockdown period, majority of the times we have been sitting, right? And, and our body is not used to sitting a lot. Our body is used to walking or uh, doing things standing, right? So, so uh, what, what's happening is our body is going through changes uh, in the sense uh, uh, either, either back pain, whatever, whatnot, right? And, and weight gain and carpal CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome because we sit on keyboard a lot. So unless uh, we come up with a new way of interacting with computers. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in uh, one of my uh, in the next few slides. And the other thing is memory loss. So now uh, even, even uh, to remember uh, my wife's phone number I, or uh, some, other, some other close relative's phone number, I have to go and check my mobile, right? So, so my, I, I started losing my memory because I'm not using it like, like earlier, because I remember the days where I used to remember landline numbers. I mean, at least a, a hundred, hundred landline numbers, right? That's not happening today. Today, even my cell phone number, sometimes I have to, you know, think. So memory loss is one of the major side effects uh, of, uh, of uh, technology. Uh, and the next thing is mental health issues, right? So addiction, addiction to technology. You might have seen in a lot of children, uh, uh, people getting addicted to games or gamings, uh, uh, I mean, a PUBG game or whatever, whatever the latest games uh, that, that, uh, that are there out there. And lack of social skills, right? The more and more children play with themselves uh, on, on, on uh, a computer, uh, being alone and uh, not interacting with their, uh, with their peers. Um, so you might, have, you might be seeing this in, in, the, in this uh, COVID times because children, not many children are going out because of uh, um, uh, Corona, uh, but they are, they, are, they are cooped up at home, right? So you might have seen their energies, right? Uh, the energies, uh, the, the, if you have two or three children, they might be fighting among themselves. This is all venting out, right? Venting out their stress, venting out their energies, right? Especially boys, uh, boys between the ages like uh, seven to 12, they are very, very, very energetic. They need to spend that energy, right? I remember an example, uh, one of my friends in the US, uh, he, had, uh, he has like uh, three boys and one girl. Right, the boys have a lot of energy, so he wants to uh, spend uh, uh, time doing uh, uh, office work at home. Kids won't let him because they have a lot of energy. They'll be disturbing them all the time. So he found out that if they spend that energy, they are going to leave him alone. 
So he used to come from uh, go to go home by four o'clock or five o'clock. He used to take them to the uh, playground, have them run around, play games. Uh, uh, I mean, baseball, whatever. I mean, catching a ball or throwing frisbee. I mean, he 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 make them tired. So by the time they come home, they are barely walking, right? Every day he used to do that. So they are barely walking. The moment they go home, they they clean up and and then have have their uh, dinner, and they used to go to sleep by six thirty seven, right? So that's the lifestyle he encouraged. And after seven o'clock, he's free to do whatever work he needs. So especially boys, uh, you you have a lot of energy. So mental health issues. I mean, people getting I mean, especially boys. I mean, uh, especially kids getting getting addicted to uh, uh, games. Right? You might know a uh, lot of games like blue well games. Uh, uh, the kids, kids, uh, kids uh, have uh, committed uh, suicide. Uh, this, this is bad. This has happened because of uh, technology, right? And, and, and as a parent and as adults, we need to keep an eye on what, the, what your kids are doing uh, with the technology, right? So this issue is a lot of, the, the, these kind of issues uh, we see a lot in Western countries because of, uh, kids talk about privacy. At the moment they are 16, they think that they are adults and they want privacy. They have separate rooms and stuff like that, right? So as an adult, you have to keep an eye how your kid is behaving. Are they, are they behaving, uh, you know, uh, other than normal? So all, all these are the things. I mean, whatever I talked about so far, uh, majority, of, I mean, I know all, all of it, you know it, but I'm insisting on them because uh, I've been in the field as a cybersecurity professional. I've seen things, uh, simple things, uh, parents ignore. Okay. So, and we come to the ugly, ugly part. Um, lack of motor skills, right? So the more you use technology, what do you do with the technology? Either you type or you do this on your mobile. So I've seen parents giving mobile to their uh, 90, nine month old or one year old uh, kids. So what happens? They get addicted. They get addicted to the mobile, the technology, something that's powerful. I mean, at, at nine months, at nine, uh, one, one year old, your eyes, in, your eyes in not, are not even fully developed, right? So, so they lack motor skills. When I mean motor skills, even uh, buttoning your shirt, right? Combing your hair, holding things, right? Opening a door. These are all the skills that they are going to forget, right? You might see, especially these kind of uh, uh, lack of motor skills in autistic kids. So even though your, some of the kids are not autistic, but they have been labeled autistic simply because they lack motor skills. They're because of lack of their uh, brain development in doing particular things. Our fingers, our hands are meant to do uh, certain things, right? You need to teach them. So one of the things like, like old times, when you go out, you, when you go and play in sa on sand, what do you do? You try to pick up sand, that means your grip, right? So um, when you go to your doctor, um, uh, I mean, at least in US, one of the things what they do is to, to see how a baby or a six month old baby motor skills are, one of the first things what they do is they try to give the finger uh, to the baby and baby holds it. Naturally, baby holds it. And they see how strong the grip is. That means that shows the baby's development, the development of the nervous system, development of the motor skills, development of the eye movement, all these things, all the perception, uh, how they are perceiving things, all these things would give a, a better understanding of how, uh, how the baby is uh, growing. So if you lack these motor skills, 
doctors may label, okay, your kid has autism. Autism has a wide, very wide range, okay? So, and, and the other thing, the ugly thing is, this one I talked about is expectations from you, right? The expectations such as I talked about, uh, the moment somebody in the office or your friend sends you an email or sends you a message uh, in WhatsApp or uh, Telegram or whatever the message, um, uh, message app that you use, if you don't respond, they feel bad. They think that you are ignoring them. Expectations from you. So you are forced to respond the moment you get on your phone even though you picked up your phone, you are busy, you are searching for something, you are busy with your work, the moment you see the message, they know that, right? You, they see a blue tick or whatever tick, tick mark, hey, that means you have read it and you have not responded to me. So the same thing with cell phone. If somebody calls you, they expect you to pick up the cell phone immediately. So, so my life, my lifestyle, I have to conform according to your whims and, and, and needs. So that's not good. I need to have my own personal life, right? So as the technology progresses, right? And you know, right? You know what I'm doing, right? For example, uh, the moment I pick up a WhatsApp, I see when somebody has logged in uh, last time, right? So that means, oh, that person is free. So he's available now, maybe I can talk. Maybe I had free time at that time and I'm not free right now, right? So this is, this is the one of the reasons why companies in the US, right? They, they uh, discourage their employees to use uh, personal messaging, right? And the another ugly part, human evolution. So because the way we are using things today, right? So our body might develop some other part, right? So we don't know. So if, if we start using uh, typing a lot, maybe our body develops one more finger, right? So for, for everybody, I mean, you, you might have seen people with six, six fingers, but that's not normal. But normally you might end up having uh, 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 six fingers and, and six or seven on each of the hand, right? So human evolution, we are in, might change, right? So this is another ugly thing that you need to worry about, right? So we talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly part of the technology. So we need to understand technology is there for our enrichment, right? For our better life, not the other way. We should not become slaves to technology, right? So that is something which you need to keep in mind. And this is something what younger generation is missing because they have grown uh, with the technology. They think it's normal, right? So it's not you need to tell them the differentiation between the regular life, uh, life without technology and life with the technology. You need to use technology when needed, right? So I'll come to that when, when I talk about uh, startups and uh, uh, the other, other part, right? So my thoughts, my thoughts, Basically, technology, we say this is modern. We don't know about technology. This is all brand new. All Western civilization or Westerners uh, gave us this technology and all that. Actually, majority of the stuff, what we have been seeing today, uh, they have been talked about in uh, our culture, in our heritage. What I, what I mean is in, in our Vedas. Rig Veda talks about science and technology, right? Um, most of the things about time, anything about science, engineering, right? Anything uh, uh, that they have talked about it, right? So I strongly believe 
one sloka in, in Veda can be a PhD topic. Like maybe, maybe a couple of words in Veda can be a PhD topic. This is something you learn from your forefathers, learn from history. So somewhere, I don't know where, somewhere we lost that. We lost learning from our previous history. Veda has nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with uh, Indian culture, but during the days, our rishis, the scientists, our, uh, one of the first scientists, they have observed things. They have gone into uh, a, another world in the sense they have gone into their inner world and talked about uh, uh, science and technology time, right? So they came up with a lot of things. So, so as a, uh, my heritage, our heritage, we need to look back, look back into our culture and then start learning things from there. And, and the other thing is, is modern technology self-fulfilling self prophecy? Right? So what is self-fulfilling prophecy? It's, it's a phenomenon. So somebody thought in 1960s or 70s, they said by 2020, we we're gonna have a flying cars, right? So somebody bought that idea. Hey, you know, we need to have flying cars. So, so what happens is without our knowledge, we need to, we will start thinking about it and we work towards it, right? So we need to have flying car by 2020. So somebody started in 70s, regular cars came and then, you know, in 2000, early 2000, people started talking about flying cars, right? So we are in 2020, we still don't have flying cars, but maybe in future. So maybe we are going to skip flying cars, right? So mobility, mobility, basically mobility is something which you are going to look at, right? So, so majority of the modern technology, what I see is it's a self-fulfilling prophecies, right? So we talked about space, space exploration. This is uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about uh, in the uh, next, uh, uh, next few topics, okay? So, Self-fulfilling, modern technology, our ancient technology. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about uh, chariots, flying chariots. Uh, you know all these things, and then and then and then there might be technology somewhere uh, that has been described uh, how to develop those chariots, right? So there are, there are a lot of things. I mean, I read somewhere during the time of uh, uh, Rama. Uh, we had uh, we had a nuclear war, so the, the whole the whole world, uh, you know, we went back to Stone Age. Okay, so this is something a lot a lot of lot of lot of uh, discussions on this topic. You know, I'm not an expert on that, but you know, that's that's very interesting, right? So having a nuclear energy, talking about nuclear uh, during those days, right? So so understanding. Uh, our Vedas, our Upanishads, which have talked about technology and for a greater good. So they talked about technology for a greater good, right? So time, time is something which we need to understand, right? This is for our greater good, okay? So technology, if, if uh, utilized properly, it's good for the humanity, okay? So let me get into next phase. Uh, I, uh, I uh, for family reasons, and then I want to get back to my home country. Uh, in 2009, I moved back to uh, India, my hometown, Tirupati, right? Uh, your, your home is home anywhere, anywhere else. Uh, I mean, I feel you're second class citizen. I mean, even, I mean, that's my personal belief. So even if I move to uh, Bangalore, and, and, and I feel uh, uh, as, as an outsider, right? Uh, I feel I'm a second class citizen there. So for some reason, I mean, because of uh, uh, work and because of the kind of new things that I've been learning there. So I spent 
a uh, good amount of time uh, and learned a lot of things in the, from the culture and then came back and then uh, started my, my own company here. Because when I landed here, I had no clear idea uh, what I want to do over here. But uh, something worked out, I started a company uh, 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 and eventually it got progressed into multiple things. So I, I'm, I'm a uh, cybersecurity professional uh, I have like 23 plus, 25 plus years of experience in cybersecurity. And this, this uh, domain is something where you can work virtually from anywhere, as long as you have access uh, uh, to the internet, right? So that helped me in establishing, getting established uh, over here. And uh, my base is, is still Tirupati. I travel uh, if required to US and uh, any place. Uh, but my base is uh, here in Tirupati. So one of the things uh, as, a, as a, my exposure to technology, uh, even as a kid, uh, you know, my dad used to scold me because I used to break things, right? Uh, because uh, I, 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 I really, really vividly remember a, a winding plane, right? My dad, my dad bought it. Uh, I played less than half an hour. I broke it into pieces. And I want to see what driving that plane to move forward, right? So this is the kind of thing, the kind of exposure I had. My dad, uh, even though he is a professor in uh, uh, geology, he is very good with his hands. That is something which he has learned uh, in his childhood. So he says uh, he used to sleep uh, in agricultural land near well. Whenever motor, diesel motors, whatever the motors they had, they used to break. They used to repair things. Right, so he had, even though by profession he is a zoology professor, he knows how to do well with uh, 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 mechanical things. So he used to, I mean, as a child, I got exposed to, uh, you know, uh, the internal parts of a scooter, like, uh, uh, like a carburetor, how to open them, how to clean them, how to put them back and all these things, right? So all these things I learned, that was my exposure. So those are the kind of things that got imbibed into, my, into me. And then I became a kind of a, an entrepreneur. I want to do uh, new things, right? Uh, and I want to do uh, uh, startups, right? That is, uh, that is uh, so, so eventually what happened is uh, I, with a group of my friends uh, here in Tirupati, we started an incubation center. So we became a private incubator and we chose uh, some of the thrust areas like uh, rural entrepreneurship and uh, IOT, um, uh, IOT, and uh, that, that's one of the hard things today. And uh, cyber, uh, cyber security and IOT security are as our thrust areas. So I've seen for the past seven, eight years, I've seen a lot of different things from different entrepreneurs, uh, startup companies, uh, and uh, some of them are mind boggling in the sense, the kind of thought that an innovator or an inventor uh, try to put behind uh, their ideas, right? So I talk about some of my uh, experiences, uh, some of my exposure uh, in, 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 in this aspect, right? So, so one of the first things I want to talk about is there's a saying, when you have a hand, a hammer in your hand, everything looks like a nail, right? Uh, so I've seen in my experience, just because we have technology, just because we have IoT, uh, internet of things, uh, small devices, whatever, people started developing uh, technology, coming with these ideas out of thin air. Right? So they never try to validate the idea, check with their friends, with their families, and to see things. Uh, recently, one of the things I have seen, right? Somebody has a, a, a developed an IoT just to watch over your boiling uh, vessel of milk, right? So they have developed technology in the sense uh, you have to put a sensor 
uh, in the milk and the uh, sensor will give you an alarm once it reaches a particular level and that the baby sends uh, messages uh, to your mobile uh, so that you can come and switch off the uh, switch off the milk right just because iot is there i mean like use common sense right i'll give you an example so so majority of you might have seen milk boilers right the technology is so advanced you just pour pour uh, you just pour milk into a vessel and we fill uh, and the bottom is filled with water and uh, the water heats up and the and the milk never spills over right so that's one the second one is my my uh, my grandmother used to do she used to put couple of spoons or uh, a, a big uh, uh, seven spoon into milk vessel it, it the milk never spills right basically it's common sense so you need to have common sense when you are developing a technology if somebody has developed this as a hobby that's all good in while learning but i think they have developed as a commercial product so when you are developing things when you are com com coming up with an idea right you have to incubate it you have to talk to your friends talk to your family see whether the, uh, you are adding any value to the humanity right so any value i mean whether it's a commercial value or whatever any value to uh, uh, to the uh, general public right so one of the things that's happening today in especially in uh, in the technology space is a uh, sunrise industry so you might know uh, what what i mean sunrise in industries so industries which are in infant stage there are some of them might be just ideas some of them might be just getting developed for the past 3 4 years so out of that the 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 space industry so let me play a video for you So some of you might have seen it, right? Uh, Star Trek, uh, one of my favorite shows uh, when I was growing up. Uh, it talks about space, and and when I saw the first time the doors, automatic doors were opening, right? It was mind-boggling. How are they doing it? Maybe somebody is uh, uh, when 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 somebody is trying to enter, they are opening doors by by uh, pulling ropes, or the, the technology has been already there. so nowadays it has become very common thing right when you go to a grocery store uh, in us or in uh, i mean the doors infrared sensors automatically open right so so the space space industry right that is growing okay the future is in space industry right so so um uh, sorry about that my internet connection is unstable that's the message so so for example people are talking about uh, recently they have launched their rocket reusable rocket people are talking about colonizing mars or colonizing moon or colonizing some other planet right so what do we need if you want to build a city in a, in a, in a, in a, some other planet you need to have what you need to have 
civil engineers, you need to have environmental engineers, you need to have mechanical engineers, you need to have uh, uh, people with uh, botany skills, uh, zoology skills. I mean, any technology, any skill that you have, you need all those. So today I tell all the younger generation, I mean, it may not happen in my, in my time, right? In another 20, 30 years, it may happen in another 40, 50 years. So, so younger generation who are in kindergarten or maybe in their, in their early teens might, might, might have an opportunity to work on, to, work, uh, to become, uh, work on these technologies, right? To work on this uh, industry, right? So anything, whatever you do, even today, if somebody is studying engineering and I tell them, whatever you do, work towards space industry, right? India, India has become the major, major hub for space industry today. It is, it is, uh, it is growing by leaps and bounds, especially the space industry in Bangalore and the, and the corridor towards uh, Krishnagiri and, and uh, Hosur area, there are a lot of space industries coming along, right? And, and uh, ISRO, very nearby, right? Nearby to Chennai. Uh, Spay, I mean, ISRO is opening up and, and they're giving opportunities to private industry. So my, uh, I insist on anything that you do, whether you're a mechanical engineer, whatever engineering that you do, have good basics and then do Towards work towards uh, becoming as part of a uh, space industry, right? Right. So, so remember that space industry is the future. That is the one of the largest sunrise industries that's happening today, right? So I know like four or five companies in in uh, in uh, US, uh, Blue Origin. Uh, I think uh, supported by Amazon and uh, SpaceX are supported by uh, Tesla and uh, NASA and even our ISRO. And we have become, uh, our technology has become much better, much faster. Uh, the launching of vehicles, uh, the time window has become much faster, right? So these are all the things that are developing today. So space industry is the future. So don't think if you're a civil engineer, uh, don't think uh, okay, you know, I need to go back to construction in on, on, on earth, maybe do a specialization. So how environment on a particular uh, uh, planet, uh, it's going to affect your construction. So if you need to build things in vacuum, how, how you can do that, right? So there are a lot of, a lot of movies done for, uh, I mean, like uh, Interstellar, these are the, some of the uh, movies uh, that you might, uh, uh, you can watch uh, how a uh, botanist, a teacher uh, became uh, a, 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 an astronaut, right? Where they go and uh, uh, they go and uh, develop, I mean, grow crops uh, in space and stuff like that. So space is uh, the next thing, right? And the other industry I've seen is food science food science and engineering. Uh, now, now, if you really look at what happened in the past three, four months because of COVID, all businesses got affected except food industry, right? They might, they might have any issues in, in delivering the products, but as a technology, as a, a, a product, they're not affected because we human beings need food, right? So, so we, we, even though during that COVID time, uh, we had given a small window, we need to go out and buy vegetables and come back and all these things, right? So food science and engineering, this is, this is one of the hard things that are happening. So this involves, again, mechanical, civil, uh, and environmental engineering, uh, chemical, uh, some of the, some of the uh, domains uh, that are needed for food science, right? For better yielding crops, right? And uh, 
tacking nutrients, uh, nutritional uh, portions in small portions, right? So, so if, I need, if I need to get my daily dose of uh, 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 vitamins, uh, vitamins, what do I do? I take a tablet. So instead of a tablet, maybe I can eat uh, a small portion of a food, um, which is natural, of course, and then, and then uh, it, it, it enriches my body, right? And, and, and also maybe by tricking your mind, right? Your mind is a strange thing, right? Sometimes uh, 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 when, you, when you smell something, uh, you remember, suddenly you remember something uh, that, that you forgot, right? When you smell a particular uh, a food that you have eaten in, when you are a child, uh, maybe people talk about, a lot, lot of people talk about uh, remembering uh, uh, beach, right? When you smell a breeze, they remember beach immediately. So your brain remembers things and then connects things, uh, whether, it, whether, whether uh, they are images and sound and smell, all these things, right? Maybe there, sometime uh, in your future, maybe you can trick your mind. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I'm eating paper and uh, my, mind my mind thinks that I'm eating chocolate. My, uh, my tongue may be tasting chocolate. I don't know, right? And food as a tablet, right? This is something which I, I mean, I think I remember seeing in Star Trek. Uh, so uh, uh, one of the engineers, uh, they, they feel like eating a burger. So he, he takes a small pill, puts it in a microwave or some kind of device and it becomes a, 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 a burger. Right, so uh, uh, this kind of technology is being developed today. Like for example, uh, for our army, uh, our government tied up with uh, MTR, uh, uh, MTR Industries, and they have developed along with uh, uh, along with the army, they have developed uh, uh, food for better storage, so that uh, our our uh, soldiers. Um, in, in cold areas, they can just heat it up and eat it. And the taste is not changing much and not much of preservatives. So, so technology is developing, right? So you, you need to, this is another industry which is uh, developing um, uh, another hot, hot uh, uh, domain. Okay. and, and uh, energy industry. So today we have solar, wind energy, uh, wave energy, uh, thermal energy, geothermal energy, a lot of energies, right? And energy sources, but we don't have a way of storing them, right? Today we are talking about lithium ion. So my battery, after three years of continuous utilization, the battery, uh, storage power goes down, right? When I bought it, it, I used to get it like every two days I used to charge. Now I need to charge every four to six hours. So depending on the usage, right? So lithium ion, lithium ion battery technology, it's, it's a small, but very unstable. So you might have seen uh, in the news, uh, lithium ion uh, goes up in flame, and they are trying to use the same technology in uh, like uh, Tesla cars. So you might have seen cars in, in uh, maybe in the news, uh, in the US, a lot of cars which got into collision and uh, the, the, the whole car goes into flame because of batteries. It's not because of something wrong with the, uh, with the car, with the mechanical parts, it's basically batteries. So we need better ways of storage, storage, better ways of uh, storage, uh, different chemicals, very unstable chemicals. Uh, let us say it's all good, but if I need to generate a, 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 this much of uh, power for, uh, uh, for to power my, uh, my cell phone, I need a huge heavy battery, right? Whereas with the lithium ion, it's very small. So, so chemistry, chemical engineering, chemistry, uh, 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 these are the uh, uh, domains where uh, they, can, they can work towards it. Because I remember CSIR in Hyderabad, 
uh, one of the scientists there, they have developed uh, using uh, uh, magnesium oxide or something like that, and they are still working on it. They haven't commercialized it. There are a lot of research have been done. They have not commercialized it, okay, because of various reasons, right? So, so energy, DC, the storage of energy uh, is one area where uh, sunrise industry industries are working on it. Whether it could be fuel cell, right? People are talked about hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, they might have, say, if everything, let, let, let's take example uh, for hydrogen fuel cell, people talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the only thing that comes out, uh, the exhaust is water. So imagine uh, today's cars, all vehicles, uh, we have our water everywhere. So what, what are we going to happen? All the roads are flooded with water, right? So, so we need to think about it, right? We need to think about if one vehicle is, uh, 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 the uh, exhaust is water, maybe we should be able to utilize the water for something else. So, so I, have, I read an article in, I think in Sweden, uh, they have built a good ecosystem. One company's input uh, is the output of another company. Like for example, uh, you might have seen fly ash bricks, right? Uh, fly ash uh, comes from uh, thermal uh, coal, coal industry and uh, thermal uh, generation, power generation. And people have started using fly ash as uh, manufacturing bricks. And you know, and the, and, the, and the other things. So that kind of uh, 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 technology, uh, you can, you you should be able to utilize, right? And and uh, uh, the other other part is energy efficient appliances uh, devices. So we have a better storage of energy. Along with that, the utilization of energy needs to also go down. Right, today's with electronics, electronics engineers, hardware engineers, they are developing better uh, technology uh, to make uh, appliances energy efficient, right? But still, we are paying a lot, even for example, our, our uh, air conditioning, right? Air, at, at home or yeah, at any company, even our company, when we look at the bill, uh, air conditioning is, is the maximum. So this is one area where the lot of uh, improvements need to be done and unlimited energy production, right? How can we can make that happen? So different sources, right? Wind, solar, maybe in future uh, something else, we don't know, right? So another, another movie which I'm going to play uh, uh, from the movie Matrix, uh, this, this is also one of my uh, favorite uh, movies. Uh, let's see it. So here uh, in the movie, The Matrix, 
they are talking about human body generating bioelectricity more than a 120 volt battery, right? And, and uh, over 25,000 BTUs of body heat, right? So, so what's happening? Uh, this may be true. I mean, this is a fiction, fictional story that has been written and a movie has been made out of it, but that may be, uh, that, that may be our future, right? Uh, we don't need uh, external, external energy. Whatever we eat, we generate enough electricity to power the devices that, 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 that we carry, right? I talked about uh, a chip getting implant, uh, implanted uh, into, your, into your brain, right? So, so maybe that chip is powered by our, by our uh, energy, by electricity energy generated by us, right? So, so the energy uh, industry is something which is uh, growing by leaps and bounds, uh, which, which may not be highly visible to you today, okay? So cybersecurity is another sunrise industry in India, at least, because of uh, more and more transactions, whatever our, we do in our life, it's, it's uh, more and more towards uh, uh, digital, right? So basically, what do we need for, uh, for to, uh, to secure ourselves? What we need is we need to apply common sense, right? So that is something which we are lacking today. I mean, I'm sorry about it to say about it. Common sense, if you have common sense, you better secure yourself, okay? So that's, that's not happening today, you know? Uh, I'll tell you the reason why. The major, major issue because of cybersecurity, I can have latest and greatest firewalls, technology, and nobody, no hacker would be able to get in, right? But hackers would be able to access whatever they want using something called, uh, using something called in a you know, webcap. Problem exists between the chair, between the chair and the keyboard, right? What is it? It's us, right? Us humans are very susceptible, are very, um, naive, right? So I'll give you an example. Our culture, culturally, majority of the Eastern cultures, we are intrinsically, we trust others, right? So for example, I'll give you ATM, ATM machines. So people come to ATM machines and uh, they, they say, hey, here is my ATM pin. Can you please get, get, get this money out of, uh, out of the uh, machine? Right? So you, <clears throat> you might have seen that. And because of that, a lot of fraud happens, right? Uh, so intrinsically, culturally, we trust others, right? So that's a problem. That's a problem for uh, digital uh, security, right? And uh, uh, whereas Western cultures, uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, they don't even share their, I mean, the, the, they don't even share their ATM pins with their spouses. So each, uh, each uh, couple, each one will have their own bank account. They, they don't, they don't uh, give uh, the ATM cards or uh, uh, the pin numbers to each other, right? So that, that's, that's their culture. They don't, they don't trust others that easily, okay? So security, uh, in our world, uh, in our in this part of the uh, this part of the world, it's 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 very difficult. Okay, you need to teach from basics. You need to tell them where they need to be cautious, uh, where they need to say no, right? All these things. For example, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 other thing, uh, the fud factor. What is it? Fear, uncertainty, doubt. I'll give you an example, um, fear. So if somebody uh, gets a phone call uh, saying that, hey, I'm calling from uh, uh, so-and-so bank, I'm the bank manager, I need your ATM card number, right? <clears throat> so people 
hey, hey, you know, why am I getting a call from the bank manager, right? And they say, why should I give you? Say, for example, if they ask, why should I give you? They are going to say, hey, well, your card will get blocked. Fear, right? What's going to happen if my card get blocked? And I don't know what's going to happen to all my money. That's uncertainty, right? So, and doubt, doubt. I mean, even though you doubt a little bit, uh, whether uh, the person called is a bank manager or not, but you still say, okay, you will open or you'll, you'll give your ATM card and give the complete uh, ATM card number, right? So <clears throat> this works not only here, this uh, FUD thing, it works uh, in, as part of social engineering in, even in the Western world. Uh, we have, we have uh, seen it many times. Uh, while, while as part of uh, cybersecurity auditors, uh, when we go to uh, banks and we pick up a uh, phone from the reception of the lobby area, and then we call uh, some, somebody's extension, we'll say, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so uh, IT guy calling, calling uh, I need your uh, password. Uh, so, so the person who picked up the call, they might say, hey, the call, for, the call came from within the building, right? So that means, yeah, probably this is an IT guy. And they might ask my name, uh, they might ask, uh, you know, why are you calling? Uh, some basic questions. And they might say, uh, yes, I'll give you my password. Sometimes they say, no, I don't want to give you my password. Then I'll go one level up. Hey, this is very urgent. Uh, if you don't give the password, that particular application or that particular thing is going to stop and our business is going to get hurt. And the CEO or your manager uh, is going to shout at you. So the fear factor, so as human beings has that fear factor. So we play on that, right? So cybersecurity is another industry where we have a lot of need of uh, younger generation people uh, to work on it, right? And <clears throat> especially recent, recently, I uh, uh, taught a batch uh, called uh, Cyber Siksha. Uh, Cyber Siksha program is be launched, is a, it's a joint initiative of uh, DSCI, uh, which is the uh, Data Security Council of India, uh, NASCAM's uh, security division, and uh, Microsoft. Uh, basically a quasi-government uh, initiative where they train uh, uh, women cybersecurity professionals. So they take only women engineering graduates who are in final year or just graduated and they train them in cybersecurity. So I happen to have a opportunity to teach, uh, to mentor uh, a batch of uh, 41 young girls in uh, cybersecurity, right? So this is an industry where it's going to grow, right? So, so that's, that's it. So as a faculty, uh, as a student, uh, you need to you need to be wary of this. These are the sunrise industries. You need to prepare your students, whatever uh, areas they do, and appropriate uh, industries. Right? You need to prepare them. You need to guide them. Right? So another thing is people process. Um, another thing in cybersecurity is for any problem to address a problem, there are three things that we depend on today. One is people, people who manage it, who touch the technology and process, how that uh, problem need to be addressed, what is the process that we need to follow, and technology, what are the technologies that we use, right? People process technology. So cybersecurity, these are the three things that we worry about, right? For example, if, uh, say, take your uh, ATM card, who has access to your ATM card, right? Who knows the PIN number? What is the process of accessing that ATM card? What is the technology that is utilized to access that ATM card? So if, uh, say for example, if you complain to your bank, hey, some, some money has been withdrawn uh, from my account uh, using my ATM card. And you, you, have, you have your ATM card with you, but still uh, ATM card fraud happened. How, how it might have happened? Three things. Somebody might have stolen your ATM card or your ATM card details. Somebody might have hacked into the process of uh, when the ATM card data is being transferred or somebody might have uh, hacked into your bank account technology and then they might have stolen it, 
right? Three, four things might have happened. So all these things, whatever happened, will fit in one of these uh, three things, right? And another thing, uh, we have a saying uh, 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 in Telugu at least, Inti Dongani Siudaina Patukoledu, right? Uh, so so uh, basically, you cannot catch hold of uh, somebody who is an insider, right? So according to an IBM survey, 60% of the uh, cyber attacks is insider job. Difficult to detect. It may take, it may take years to detect, right? So, so you, need to, you need to remember that, right? Insider job. So there is, there is uh, you know, uh, cybersecurity is something which we, I mean, I think uh, um, uh, our, uh, some of our uh, esteemed uh, uh, speakers might have talked about cybersecurity and what's happening today. And I didn't have an opportunity to listen to those talks, uh, but uh, you know, in future, uh, I mean, I highly recommend uh, your college uh, to promote uh, cybersecurity as one of the divisions and uh, maybe offer um, uh, a bachelor's in cybersecurity and then master's, right? So you can, you can create uh, you, you, your own uh, niche area. And there are only few colleges, a few universities in India, now they are offering, uh, that too, they are offering only master's. They are not offering any bachelor's. So probably you can uh, uh, maybe minor in cybersecurity or something like that, that is something uh, which uh, I highly uh, recommend uh, to your college uh, to consider, okay? So in conclusion, so some of my recommendations, my observations uh, after coming back uh, from US, how our education system is and how things are uh, 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 today uh, in, ter in, ter in terms of uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, our education system, right? Uh, one of the things I found, uh, we are not insisting on quality of education. Uh, we talk about, you know, uh, I mean, like when I go visit uh, education institutions, they talk about, they still talk about the infrastructure. Oh, we have uh, AC campuses. Uh, here we have a lot of computers. Uh, we have, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, um, a good, good environment, campus, and stuff like that. Uh, this is all good. This is all good. These are all the, some of the things that we are going to need for a better education. But I think we need to insist on content, right? The content of education. So uh, Tirkural, uh, one of my good good friends uh, introduced me to uh, Tirkural. I mean, I'm not an expert in all Tirkural, all all, all uh, corals. Uh, but you know some of them are uh, very, very important, and like education. Uh, corals 391, 392, and 393. They talk about uh, the quality of uh, education uh, and uh, how education should be uh, seen. Uh, so one of the things they talk about is a teacher poor in content will ruin the career of the students. So I, I always compare a teacher uh, uh, to a doctor. So you need to be up to date with the, whatever is happening today out there today in society. Say like a half back doctor will be harmful to the society, to the patients, right? So if I if I am a doctor, if I if I don't keep updated myself with the whatever the latest medicines, whatever the uh, latest technologies that are out there, I'm going to get outdated uh, pretty fast. Similarly, teachers need to keep. Uh, update uh, themselves with the kind of uh, programs that uh, your college is offering today, uh, the faculty development program. Uh, I mean, uh, you may not be, uh, you, uh, nobody is going to expect you to be an expert uh, in uh, cybersecurity <coughs> or AI and ML or robotics, whatever the technology that comes along, okay? Your expertise, you are the guys, you are the uh, people who can understand students pretty well. You know how to teach them things, okay? If I need to do, uh, do the same thing what you're doing, I won't be able to do it because I come from an angle from industry perspective. You, as a teacher, 
you know how to mold how to mold students how to talk to them how to teach them how to introduce them to the new things right you may not be able to be an expert so what you can do is you as part of these kind of faculty development programs you try to learn something about it like for example ai people talk about the ai artificial intelligence and machine languages and stuff like that i'm not an expert but my angle is i want to know what ai is what ml is what as a cyber security professional i know the future is going to be ai so i need to deal with it so i want to understand what ai is i may not be able to program uh like uh, a python framework uh, uh, that is suitable for ai i am not be able to do programming but i need to understand what the ai is so these are the kind of things that teachers need to spend a decent amount of time um whether as part of their uh, uh, as part of their curriculum or as a hobby uh, they need to learn things right so i highly recommend uh, these kind of uh, development programs uh, uh, and uh, uh, learn 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 new new stuff okay so maybe maybe in, in all these four or five days uh, five days of program uh, uh, google or something okay so so that's that's one and some of our suggestions uh, to the faculty because we go to the campuses and talk to students and try to hire them as part of uh, for, for our companies um one of the things uh, my recommendations are suggestions are encourage students to be a uh, creative right when they when you give them a problem uh, tell them to be more creative i uh, tell them to come up with uh, uh, with a solution uh, out of the box solution right uh, that is not something that is not normal right that 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 what this kind of uh, 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 culture uh, will uh, will make them to be uh, creative uh, when they go on to the industry and they they try to do because uh, today's uh, sorry to say today's education uh, like uh, it's 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 more of spoon feeding right this is something which i have observed and this is something which i observed in the, some of the people who join me they have this part they have this part they can they can excel but they are still waiting for information to be fed to them right spoon feeding uh, this is not good i have observed uh from from uh, 96 97 onwards because uh for a company that i used to work in us they used to have a branch in india so whenever i used to work with people in india they wanted information they want information on a platter right just in front of them so that they can eat it or you need to feed them right that's not good and also i have them come up with uh, different ways of solving a problem give them some problem spend one hour two hours uh, you know give them a small problem have them have them uh, uh, solve it in a, in a different way and encourage them to be entrepreneurial right whether they they want to become a, they want to start a startup or whatever this kind of uh, entrepreneurial nature would definitely help them uh, to become better in whatever the profession they go into right so and and uh, from students i request you must be adept at adapting to the fast changing technology right i'll give an example uh, yesterday somebody one of my colleagues have been talking about there uh, there are going to be huge layoff in uh, one of the big uh, uh, big uh, companies uh, here in india uh, the layoffs is between uh, like uh, they the depend, depending on their cadre the ages would it would be between 35 to 50 so the moment you are 35 or 40 your learning capacity goes down and you may not be able to find a job immediately i mean at least in us we have seen uh, we have seen uh, if you lose a job when you are in 20s 
you will be able to find another job within a month in 30s probably 2 months in 40s it might take about 6 months if you are in 50s it will take at least 6 months to 1 year if you are in 60s you can forget about a job okay that's how uh, te- technology company sees you the moment you reach 60 or 40s they think that you are untrainable and uh, you you they won't be able to teach you uh, anything new right so i highly recommend cultivate this ha- habit of adapting things to faster changing environment right so cultivate that so uh, think think about ideas come up with the ideas right and another thing is i highly recommend uh, universities Uh, to establish our colleges to establish technology transfer office so i, I have seen this uh, majority of lot of universities in india they are very good at doing research but they are very bad at converting that research into a product uh, into a technology into something that is useful uh, to our uh, citizens right uh, so technology transfer office is something which will enable in converting your phds that is research work that is being done in 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 your university or a college uh, into a product right so this is something uh, which your university can uh, definitely help right so uh, i am a show in my humble opinion uh, we need to go back to the uh, old style gurukul style of education maybe small adjustments need to be done uh, ad- uh, to the uh, present uh, environmental uh, conditions right so uh, that is something which we need to uh, worry about uh, I, i think i'm running over time i'm already 5 minutes over um, and the rote learning rote learning is not helping us uh, learning writing answers in the same sentences uh, writing answers according to the books and all these things it's not helping us right i mean this is something which i learned in my 7th grade we had a science teacher uh, she encouraged us to write answers for in an exam in our own uh, based on our own understanding uh, you know i mean i uh, she gave something about uh, how a human body develops uh, 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 immunity to antibiotics so i wrote i mean i understood how our body does and i wrote in my own words and she appreciated so this is something which we need to encourage i know marks are very important as long as the gist the gist of things are in the answer that means the the student have understood what Uh, what you are asking right so that is something which uh, we need to uh, uh, really about and 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 i highly recommend our faculty to nurture ideas uh, uh, from your students as a hobby uh, you know maybe you can create some hobby clubs which you may already have uh, uh, people and students can spend some time i mean i have seen universities uh, like for example um, Uh, i think uh, in andhra one of the universities like uh, they they highly recommend their students uh, to go and get jobs when they are in like uh, second year or third year I, i don't recommend that but uh, they recommend in such a way that uh, you 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 develop uh, some kind of uh, uh, skill so that you are prepared for your future okay uh, thank you thank you uh, professor shobha for uh, uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, all the best uh, to all the uh, learned uh, esteemed uh, uh, faculty and all the thank best thank you sir yes yeah. so thank you sir thank you very much for your wonderful presentation now we'll go for a questionnaire session sir i have some questions from the participant side just sure. i Go ahead, sir. Rajkumar. Rajkumar. Hello. Yes, sir. Are you 
Shobha? Shobha Rani? Rajkumar, please. Um, sir, we have a question, sir, from the participants. Is there okay. any technology to remove e-waste? Any one, name any one technology to remove e-waste? Okay. So e-waste is a technology. There are two, I mean, uh, we had a couple of startups, uh, one in Bangalore and uh, one in uh, IIT Tirupati, where we have been helping them uh, in uh, e-waste. Actually, this is one area where there are a lot of research and a uh, lot of uh, development need to be done uh, because uh, e-waste is a major problem today for us in, in India. Uh, if uh, uh, the technologies that are out there, uh, you need to have uh, you need to have domains uh, in uh, chemical engineering. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, how? Uh, what are all the uh, uh, composites, what are all the components that are available in a, in a PCB, uh, so how you can reuse and dismantle things and reuse things. Uh, these are all the things that, uh, that, can, be, uh, that can be learned and uh, if uh, somebody is interested, please have them contact me. I can uh, guide them to appropriate uh, areas where uh, they can learn more about this e-waste. This is the need of the hour. Actually, we need uh, uh, we need a lot of companies in this space and there is a lot of demand for it. Thank you, sir. The next question was any course related to steady space industry, sir? Okay. Space industry is something, uh, there is no specific course, uh, but there are, there are uh, institutes like uh, uh, ISRO has an institute in uh, uh, Tirunanthapuram where uh, they have an MTech program uh, where you can go and study about uh, how the space things work. But any domain, any domain, uh, if you, I mean, like for example, civil, uh, right now I don't see major any of the universities offering specific to space industry. But uh, my guess pretty soon uh, you will end up seeing uh, universities are offering uh, specific to space programs. So far, it's all uh, information that is available on the internet, uh, preparing yourself. Or one of the things is become, a, become an, an intern, become an intern in, uh, in the industry where you want to, uh, where uh, you want to become a professional. <clears throat> For example, uh, if you want to uh, join a space industry where they design uh, spaceships or uh, rotors for uh, space, you know, there are a lot of industries that are available in Bangalore. Uh, you just find out those industries, apply them, apply to them saying, hey, I just want to do an internship for three months, uh, six months, or whatever, and become an intern. Even after you graduate, become an intern there, there are a high, very, very high chances that uh, you, you, uh, 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 you will become uh, an employee there. Thank you, sir. The final question, uh whether you will give an opportunity to do mini projects related to the incubator work for our students, sir? So definitely, but my projects, they are, they are going to be, um, uh, you know, what do you call, uh, uh, not live projects as such, but my projects, some of them would be research projects or some of them would be, uh, may include development. Yeah, definitely, I would be happy to work with your students and then, uh, you know, uh, work them on the projects. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Once again, now the time for delivering vote of thanks. So I thank uh, management of RMK Group of Institutions for giving the opportunity to conduct the six days FDP. And I thank our beloved principal, Dr. Enna Anbuchelian, and our beloved HOD, Dr. P. Elumadai, sir, for uh, having uh, giving permission and making very grand success for this FDP, six days FDP. And I thank Dr. Shobha Rani, ma'am, and Dr. Anita, ma'am, those who are joined session today for organizing this session. And, and finally, I thank the today's speaker,
and it was very wonderful session sir for today especially your motivational speech regarding to the faculty and the students so i thank you very much uh, mr ari murlidhar p uh, the director chief advisor of zarada information service private limited from tirupati thank you so much sir we got a very wonderful feedback from the participants in the live chat it's a very very informative session for the students as well as the faculty especially the sunrise industries uh, about the cyber security futures and especially the, the you are quoted with the tirukural so that's also nice to hear so we are very fortunate to have you on the uh, session today sir and once again i thank on behalf of uh, rmd engineering college thank you so much for joining today's session sir thank you sir thank, thank you sir. thank you for the opportunity Thank, thank you, you sir. sir thank you sir thank you very much for you anita sir we'll close the session sir